Hey guys, today we have this uh, DS Cosmetics handle with a Badger silver tip knot and this is one of my favorites. It's from the Golden Nib and it's their premium grade. Uh, we'll look into that in more detail later. I want to make sure it's nice and wet before I load the soap, which is this awesome little beast right here. And I say beast because it's just this wonderful blend of different scents that you're not going to find too many other places. Uh, caramel, maybe a little beer, um, grass, and uh, just so many other, uh, several other scents that uh, I really enjoy. Maybe just a tad bit of smoke or wood. Yeah, definitely wood. I just, this is one of my favorites. And it came along kind of in the beginning of my uh, wet shaving experience because uh, Barrister and Man had several options available on Amazon. And so, man, like a kid over a Sears wish book, I poured over the scent descriptions and uh, Diamond was a risk. But I decided to go ahead and do it um, because you never know how something's going to turn out. You never know which scents are stronger or not stronger. I'm so glad that I, I picked it up. I've actually got another backup of this one too, which is uh, kind of rare for me. Uh, today is the last shave before austere August, and I hope that my chiseled face midnight stag aftershave has arrived back home so that I can enjoy it for austere August. Um, the uh, soap is going to be the mat, uh, midnight stag as well from chiseled face, and so. Um, uh, and I'm also going to be taking my Nasset blade uh, to a little over 200 uses during the month of August is the plan. Hopefully it cooperates. Um, and so uh, right now the razor that works best with that is a timeless open comb. And so I'll be using that. And so I wanted to use another one of my favorites before that month started. Love the smoothness and efficiency of this 16. It's a... British Gillette Aristocrat uh, from uh, the set number 16 and it has the uh, the flat base plate right there doesn't have the flanges on the on the ends it's got the notched it's called having a notched uh, rail there center bar maybe is what they call it it's got a solid uh, handle and the just it's it's just beautiful um, mine is a little bit, has a little bit of handle damage here, you know, uh, bronzing where the plating has worn away. But if I were to get one that was in perfect condition, it would be way more expensive. Uh, so I enjoy this one. Uh, and the three items I've shown you are ones I really enjoy. And so let's throw a wild card in there just for fun. Voshkod. It's a blade, I, this one I've used maybe four or five times uh, for details. You can, yep, looks like four times. So this will be the fifth one, Teflon coated. And uh, not really any more information on the back of the envelope than that. And, uh, and let me show you the blade. Yeah, this one's been used four times. One of the cool things about this wrapping is that there is no... Uh, goo. There's no little waxy residue holding the blade to the paper envelope that it comes in. And I like that because that residue just kind of gets in your razor heads and you've got to uh, work to, to scrub it out. So here's one side of this blade. And then here's the other. Just drop it in that's my shower over there I guess you know the final drips out of the head uh, and that reminds me to tell you that my prep today was a, uh, a shower tepid shower a little bit warmer than tepid just to keep it comfy um, so my hairs have been sufficiently softened relatively speaking hey so the uh, brush has been soaking for several minutes, uh, probably a little bit more than that, and 
the growth, my growth today is a few hours over 24, maybe a day, well, actually probably a day and a half, something like that. Almost that. So I'm gonna shake out most of the water. Here at this location, it's nice because the uh, uh, water is pretty soft. So that's, most of the soaps I have work just fine in hard water, at, like I have at home, but there are a few that this is nice. You don't have to worry about it here. All right, we're gonna do a 30 second load. This is the Glissant base from Barrister and Man. It's a little bit older. They are actually releasing, I believe it's already out, uh, Diamond again. One of the reasons I went ahead and bought a backup was because they uh, said they were going to, um, there was no news that it was going to come back. But uh, in this Excelsior base that Bear Stern Man has come out with, they are uh, saying that uh, cool limiteds like uh, Baudelaire, uh, which I also enjoy, and then Diamond are going to be coming back in that base. And so that's great news. Um, I think I like the Glissant maybe a little better than the Excelsior. And that's not saying it's better. That's just saying it's different. These bases, they just have different attributes for the most part. Um, most of the time, a new soap base won't purely improve on the aspects that make the previous one better. Most of the time it shifts, there, at least in the last few years. Uh, most of the time it shifts into something different. And so it's just fine to like the old one because, for instance, Declaration Grooming has the older bison base, and it's not too old, actually. But then they came out with Icarus. Well, Icarus is a little bit lower, more gluey-like lather, uh, whereas the bison beefs up a little bit. Beef, bison, yeah, sorry. It wasn't intentional. The bison is, bison is a little thicker, but it's a fattier slickness that I particularly enjoy the the slick feel of that is different than Icarus uh, also the bison doesn't have as many post shave goodies for your skin and I don't care about that I've got post shave products so the bison is good for me all right uh, and that's similar kind of the way it is with the uh, glissant and the reserve uh, the reserve was an improvement in, in some respects and, but they're both terrific bases. And then you've got Excelsior. You've got three Barrister and Man bases that are easy to come by right now. And they're all terrific in their own right. And so you have to do your research to try to figure out uh, which one matches you unless you're just rich and can just buy them all. All right. Uh, we are ready to go. Let me wet my face just a little bit. Man, yep, I can feel that. I can feel those whiskers. So here's what 30 second load looks like. Let's just see how it does. Yesterday's, the previous shave was, uh, had an okay look to the brush after I loaded, but it was an old puck of Mickey Lee, La Belle de Sud, and it was very clear once I started lathering my face for the first pass that even though it looked okay in the bowl, it had basically just puffed up and there wasn't much to the lather. And so by the time I finished uh, uh, lathering for that first pass, I kind of, it was dissipating on my face and I needed more. Definitely should have loaded for a little bit longer, but that is what notes are for. And besides that, it could have just been an age thing. If, if the top could have dried out and been uh, a little more resistant to to loading, normal. So maybe the first time I you, one was to use it in a couple of years, that one might need to add 15 seconds or 20 seconds to the load, and then the next time it's it's not as much. That would be within the realm of feasibility. Ah, yes. Definitely allows you to transport yourself back to a, a ball game if you if you want it to. It's nice. Hey, speaking of ball game, uh, you've got the uh, uh, up dog, which is purported to smell like hot dog water. 
it's from Bufflehead and it was a limited run and it's really hard to obtain uh, unless you just kind of get lucky and uh, or you've got tons of money I'm lucky but it actually doesn't smell like hot dog water but that would be interesting uh, holy cow has one I think it's called bacon interalia don't know what the interalia means specifically but it's a bacon type scent with some other goodies thrown in so this is looking predictably great from barrister and man if you like it dry you might want to stop there but I want it to be slick let's just do a finger test anyway Oh yeah, nice, nice viscosity. I can feel the resistance. Yeah, there we go. Nice slickness across my fingertips. The uh, With some soaps, there's some slickness that remains after I move my thumb across my fingers, but it's a very thin film. Sometimes it's watery and there's not really very much slickness remaining. But here, it's more a thicker film that's, that's on my fingers that, that just stays there. Uh, and that is that is excellent love that and why i love the glissant base we have added two teaspoons of water so far i'm going to reload my dude let's put in another half can probably shave with what i have but i like it a little slicker That looks a little more rounded, a little less shapey. I think I'm going to add one more half teaspoon to this. I don't know if this helps too much, especially not today since I pre-showered pre before my shave. My face is already pretty clean, uh, but if I don't, uh, most of the time I don't shower before, and so this would help to dispel the oils and stuff that are prolific on my face. I have oily skin for sure. If you have oily skin, a post-shave product that has alcohol can sometimes help to control that, help to... Uh, work out um, it's kind of temper the oiliness of your skin because uh, it dries out your skin just a just a touch and so oily people kind of need that sometimes if you have dry skin then you'll want to go for a, maybe a balm um, instead which is more like a lotion all right let's shave with this it looks great Look at that stretch. Look at those long peaks. Not really able to hold up their weight. This little guy can kind of hold up his weight in some respects. Look at how awesome that lather is. This is the difference between a top tier soap and not, in my opinion. All right. And I can just feel it on my fingers as I'm rinsing. Get a little on my fingers as I'm brushing it up and then have to rinse that off. And that's a great way to sample the lather and feel how it's going to act when it's on your face. A little bit more water now on my face. Okay. Bought a little fader brush used on the mar uh, used market a while back, a few days ago, and it arrived then, and uh, it was super soft. They have to loft it really short, it seems, because it's so soft that the fibers, the hairs, would probably tie themselves in knots and get all tangled up if they weren't. And uh, 
it was so soft that it was an instant competitor to to this golden nib brush which is I've just always enjoyed a really nice soft feel from and it's not giving me a soft feel right now because it's having to brush over a bunch of uh, what I'm actually feeling is my my longer than usual bristles uh, beard and so uh, it'll, it'll feel awesome the second and third passes though. See how this Voshkod does. I haven't tried it in too many ra uh, razors. But this is a razor that handles so many blades really well. And it is doing a great job cutting through this extra growth. Now, I, I want to try, because I believe it's kind of inconsequential, not really stretching my skin too much on the first pass, because we are just not going to cut too close. I mean, unless you're a person who likes to try to get in a two-pass shave, uh, and that's not me. I, I enjoy the process, the brush, the soap. Oh, yeah, that wonderful scent. Five out of ten, maybe, in terms of strength. Just fully able to appreciate and enjoy this, this soap. All right. I did pull and stretch my neck just a little bit. That was mainly for safety reasons and not performance reasons. Uh, you know, I've got rolls on my neck here, wrinkles, and so I needed to make sure I didn't catch myself. I've done it way too many times. My goatee has gotten longer lately, and so I uh, need to trim it, but it holds hair, it holds water. And so if you also keep a portion of a beard and it's longer, make sure you get that water out of there because it can flush out your lather. If, it, if your lather is built properly, you could work it into your routine if you wanted to uh, do that. Put on a, a much wetter lather and then squeeze some water out of your goatee from the rinse, you know. There we go. See, here's the softness because the hair isn't really getting in the way. Just a really nice. The fader is probably softer. And because I bought it used and it's such a small little guy, um, it's only a little bit more than the price of this one by the time you add the, uh, the knot and the handle uh, price together. But since it's smaller, it's more difficult to whip up a lather with because the handle is much shorter. It gets slippier, slipperier during use. Uh, and because the length of the both the, uh, the, just the whole brush in general is so much shorter, you have to do more hand work in the bowl. Uh, so maybe a face latherer is going to appreciate that kind of brush much more. But it does make me want to maybe look at some of the faders uh, that are larger. Um, I believe mine's a 4125, and then they do this thing, it's a slash and then a one-digit number. It seems like the, the slash one is a 24 millimeter knot, uh, which normally, uh, actually, I think is the same size as this one. It's just got a much shorter loft with a theta. Um, and then you get in larger quantities with a slash two, slash three, slash four, that sort of thing. And so uh, maybe I could look at the uh, dimensions of the handle and look at the higher numbers and see if one of them starts to resemble a better size that I might enjoy. Um, of course, they're going to get higher in price, right? But I could put it on my to keep an eye out for list. If one ever came up on the used market, then I'd know which one would be might be worth jumping on. All right. Lather feels great, giving me good slickness, a uh, perfect, based on that first pass, perfect consistency. Creamy, luxurious rinses, and uh, but still excellent slickness. Now I'm going to maybe puff my cheeks up to try to get that closer shave a little bit, pull my sh back other opposite shoulder, uh, uh, my shoulder away, um, the one that's away from you. To uh, tighten up my my chin there, my uh, cheeks rather. It 
So this uh, blade is treating, um, is behaving very nicely in this razor. Kind of expected it to, but it still was a question mark. This is my last shave before I am shaving with a timeless, uh, with an old blade for a whole month. And so I was hoping it would be an enjoyable shave, and it, it has been. A good choice. Cutting well. All right, third pass. And yes, I have plenty of lather. So when am I going to remember? I probably have some notes at uh, tell me how the 30-second default load that I do is a little bit overkill for glissant, but I didn't check them. I actually dabbed my towel on my face after the rinse just to eliminate a couple of wet spots to thicken up my lather. My second one, while it was really slick and high performance, it was still very good. I just wanted it to feel a little creamier. And so I, my face, I made my face not come into this particular lather application with as much water on it. And I've been rewarded with a, a thicker, a thicker layer here. A little little tweak you can do to fine tune a lather. That way you don't have to try to add soap back into the lather. I'm going to switch and do my kind of reverse stroke here in my trouble area. And this is the best so far that I've found method for getting those hairs to get cut. They have been tricky and required a lot of experimentation. You might have a patch like that on your own face, not necessarily in the same area. A uh, viewer, I believe Talega One, if I'm working that out right in my head, um, uh, might have been the one that said he has a similar uh, spot right here, uh, and that things go twisty, and he he actually has to use a different kind of razor there. He gets ingrown hairs. Um, that's something important. I'm very fortunate and blessed that I don't have the ingrown hair problem, like a, a good many razor uh, any shavers out there do. Um, it is twisty around here, and if I go out of bounds with that particular stroke higher or over here, then it starts to get against the grain, and I get some irritation there. So I have to be careful and slow. And there we go. Three passes. I'm going to rinse and check out the closeness. I'm happy with that. I did not do a touch-up. Uh, this Boschkai blade, not quite as good as a few of them out there. At, at such a young age, with just this being the fifth use, there are other blades that, uh, in this razor, like a feather, uh, some others, that wouldn't leave any hairs right there with uh, any length on them. And there are a few. And uh, But in general, a very nice, close, flush cut where all I see is some, some tips of the hairs and only just a few have some length to them. Uh, I could do a touch-up. I just don't feel like it today. I'm going to keep it casual, enjoyable, smooth. Sometimes I do that touch-up and all I get is no more cut hairs and just a little bit more irritation. So let's not do that today. And what do I have? You know what? Uh, I'm traveling and my wife doesn't like Old Spice. And so I often use it when I travel uh, out of respect for her. I don't want to, I don't want her, I don't want to smell like something she doesn't like, right? I'm not going to put on tons because I've got to go to work and do some do some stuff. And so I don't want to sit there. Sometimes if you put on too much of something that's a strong scent, then you have to kind of sit in your own smell for a while, you know. And sometimes that's not fun. Uh, I have a balm with me that I've been using for the last few days. Tuscany by Sterling really enjoy this one. It's got, I think, violet and, um, or some floral like that. Um, and 
Well, darn it. Okay. Oh, uh, bergamot. A uh, kind of in the, from the bitter orange tree, I believe, is what uh, what that is. Or it's an, in the orange family. It's neroli and pettigrain that are from the the bitter orange tree. Maybe uh, maybe the uh, this is too. But uh, not, I'm not going to commit to that. But to me, it smells like cherries. And I've used it a lot. If you have skin problems and you like the scent that comes in an, uh, this is the point I'm getting to. Uh, if you like the scent that comes in an um, alcohol-based splash, but your skin is a little bothered by it, a couple things you can do. I've seen one shaver online who applies the alcohol splash to the back of his neck. You get the same scent, but then it doesn't irritate your skin. It's one idea. You can combine it and use it with a balm. Maybe get an unscented balm. I recommend uh, Sterling has an unscented. A soap Commander is also really good, and they have an unscented. You can choose with menthol or without menthol for their unscented. And uh, you can then figure out whether you like to maybe put the balm on first and then do some of your wrap up and clean up. Let that balm absorb and then take your post shave, uh, take your alcohol splash and then splash it on. And now your skin is more ready to receive it. Or you can switch it and uh, throw the alcohol on first, get that scent and then kind of heal everything with the, uh, with the balm. So try it both ways if you're interested in doing that. The alcohol splash usually has a more potent hit of the fragrance. So if that's important to you, then this might be something you have to bring into your routine to have a longer lasting fragrance than what a balm can bring you. So how much soap do I have left over? Maybe, yeah, three passes, easy. Nice long peaks, elastic, stretchy, and this is such a good soap. If you like it wetter, you can push it wetter with no problem. You'll still get a great slick shave. You just may not have that creaminess that I, I like to enjoy. But it's a good, it's a, it's a quality soap that you can do that uh, if you want. Now, how much, this little 22 millimeter or 24 millimeter knot, how much lather is it going to hold? Yeah, pass by itself. No problem there. This knot is, uh, as far as I know, not going to gel, and I'm happy about that. I kind of like normal tips instead of jelly ones. Uh, so here's him after just kind of a, a quick rinsing. I'll strop him on the towel, rinse him a little bit more, strop him on a towel, uh, show you. Here's what he looks like. Uh, rinsed him off, stropped him on a towel a little bit, so this is kind of how he looks like in a normal, um, normal day. A little, a few of the tips have almost got a jelly-like appearance. You can see that the whitest areas that you see are tips that are kind of clumping together because they're wet and so thin, uh, and that provides that wonderful uh, softness. Um, but who knows? I wonder if they'll transform over time and get softer or whatever. But I just really enjoyed this knot. The soap. Uh, has been allowed to sit by while I was shaving and dry out a little bit. So now I'm going to seal it up. This is just what I do. Some people like to leave it o open for 24 hours to really let it dry, but that's not me. So really happy with the Voshkod today. It worked really well. Um, not as as just top level close as some of the a few other blades out there, but it's performing just like most of the blades out there. And so definitely respectable, enjoyable shave, a good comfort. Uh, and this razor is a nice balance of comfort and close shaving, like so many of the aristocrats from the UK back in that time. It's a, uh, we've got some smooth ones in the US, like the Tex, uh, and then some middle of the road ones, uh, like the Super Speeds. Many of those don't clamp down on the edge quite close to the edge, and so there's a little scrapey sound, and some people like that a lot but they're kind of middle of the road where this one is middle of the road, but it clamps down closer to the edge. And so you get smoothness, uh, predictability, control. Those are some of the uh, benefits of that design. You may like a little bit more audio feedback to tell you how your shave's going. That's okay. This razor is just not gonna be the one to give it to you. Uh, 
So plenty of people like those super speeds. The 40 style super speed is a um, uh, is a little bit different. It clamps a little closer to the edge. It's an inexpensive way to get a really good uh, efficient yet smooth shaver. Uh, three teaspoons it looks like is what it took for that overload of lather. 30 seconds and three teaspoons. I would maybe seek to back it down to 20 seconds next time and see what happens. Obviously it'd need a little bit less water. Barrister Man, this glissant base is just so forgiving. Uh, if you a little bit less water and you're still probably going to be okay, just a creamy feel, but then to get that ultra slickness, add more water, and then to, uh, and still some creamy feel, and then to uh, to go really thin and slick, uh, maybe for a straight shaver, then a little bit more water after that. Well, I'm enjoying the Old Spice uh, in, in a good quantity here. Uh, it's not overwhelming. I'm going to enjoy it for several more hours, I'm sure. The scent on that soap, I think I told you about five, maybe six in terms of strength. A perfect strength to be able to enjoy it, but not have it not overwhelm you. While you're while you're doing your shave, uh, I think I've covered everything. The awesomeness of the razor, the blade did really well. Love the soap, love the brush. Um, yeah, we're good. Uh, so I hope there was something here for you that you enjoyed during the shave. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Have a good day.